Hey, welcome to the Duranify channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about the latest release from Femi.com. It's announced the Femi X8 Mini on the webpage. And uh, I wanted to capture the, my initial reaction of reading all this information that they're releasing. So let's jump into it. Um, let me go ahead and just type in um, Femi.com here. And when we get to the Femi.com uh, webpage, right at the top you see a banner that says Femi X8 Mini April 6th through April 8th. It, they have a special um, price for it that says dollar sign three question mark nine. So my guess is somewhere around $350 is what this is going to go for. That's what they did with the Femi X8 2018 and 2020. So let's jump into this information. You click on the banner and it opens up a new tab if you're using Chrome. So here we go. Here it is, right? And the way AliExpress works, I forgot to mention, it, AliExpress is hosting the FEMI official store and that's where it's going to be sold from. So, here it is. Let's hit this first option. Option number one, you get a standard battery, nothing else. Option number two is grayed out. Bummer. Oh, it looks like, well, I don't know, it's hard to see. Option number three gives you a standard battery and propellers. And they show 12 of them. Option number four, it gives you a landing pad and a standard battery. Option number five gives you the standard battery and a 64 gigabit card. And option number six gives you the standard battery and a 120 8 gig card. All right, scrolling down. Here we go. Oh, right there it is. Looks pretty neat. The world premiere at April 6, 000 through April 8th. So at midnight Pacific Standard Time on April 6, you'll be able to buy it. For a reduced price of three, probably 350 bucks. Ooh, yes! Look at that. Two different colors. We have an orange color, and then we have like that white color that we're all used to. 250 grams, ultra design, eight kilometer transmission, 30 minute flight time. Ooh, Type C battery charger, charging battery, 4K HDR video. Very nice. Three axis mechanical gimbal level five resistance. Hmm. We'll have to look at that a little closer when we get to it. So this is the ultra light design, and you get it's about 250 grams. That's what it looks like. I like this bag. That gray color bag is nice. It kind of looks like a leather bag, but I'm sure it's not leather. It, the zipper doesn't look like it's waterproof. Okay, here we go. This is important. You can choose between two batteries, the standard and the pro. The pro puts the drone under 245 grams, and um, the standard battery puts the mini at 258 grams. So if you're using your standard battery, you will have to register yourself as a pilot with the FCC in the United States and over in Europe. You'll have to do the same thing. Most of the world's that way. Okay, eight kilometer transmission upgraded TDMA image transmission system ensures stabler transmission and optimize sensitivity. Sounds good. Good marketing, right? Ah, <laughs> uh huh. So, you can fly farther and see further. Okay. Ooh, the controller looks nice. It's different. It's got little handles around the bottom instead of being just flat. It looks like they're doing the cable management better for the on-the-go. Yeah, OTG cable. 30-minute flight time. 
Ooh, okay, six meters a second in windless environment at a speed of six meters a second. Okay, so that's what you have to fly to get that that 30 minutes. Real slow. Ooh, type C fast charging battery, nine volts at three amp rapid charging. So guys, this is a good travel drone because then you can put it in your extra batteries in your car and charge them while flying. And, or you're going from one location to the other, or you put them in your backpack with your really nice power pack and charge them. Very nice. It looks really easy and simple. Okay, now we're getting to the things that we really want to see. It's a 4K camera with stabilized, uh, three axis stabilized gimbal. Uh, they're talking about the pressure control algorithm. Gives you better accuracy of 0 0.005 degrees. Ooh, that gimbal looks different too. And the camera looks different. All right, so right here, I have both of the palm and the palm too. Let's take a look at this, see if it's the same. No, it's totally different. That's more of a round camera. This is more of a square camera, you see that? Okay, let's see what the Palm 2 looks like. No, it doesn't look like the Palm 2 either. Not at all. See that? I can get it to focus. It's trying to focus. Focus, focus, focus. Yay, focus. He is different. So, yeah. Pretty cool looking picture, though. They do everything, that, like the body, transparent. Yeah. Looks promising. Okay, so you can do 4K 30 frames a second. You can do it in two, probably 264 and 265 codecs. Uh, you can do DNG and F-Log format supported. That's nice. That's DNG is new, which is the raw format. So that's perfect. Uh, to try to edit in your blockbuster. Enjoy your first visual experience. So the marketing is pretty good too there also. Um, so they're shown here the F-Log and DNG raw. Uh, the codex and your 4K 30 frames a second. 100 megabits per second. Now, the question is, is it that number real or not? Usually we don't achieve those numbers with the 2020 version of the Femi X8. Um, usually about uh, mid 70s is what we're seeing. Uh, once you pull up the properties of the video that you recorded, it'll show you uh, your, your bit rate. Ooh, that's different. You can fly it with your phone up to 100 meters. Why would that be useful? Quickly record any beautiful moments you don't want to miss. There you go. That's why it's useful. <laughs> Answer the question. Read, read the marketing spiel. Ooh, five level wind resistance. Nothing new about, oh gosh. 25 miles an hour winds, which is about 38 kilometers an hour is what it can handle. So pretty good, guys. So it's not going to fly away and you can fly into the wind. Okay, not bad. So it says here, the thrust to weight ratio and faster response speed experience a seamless flight, whether you're on top of a windy mountain or walking along the beach. How is that for marketing, man? That's good. <laughs> All right. Okay, the handy remote control is light and easy to carry. The upgraded receiver lets you enjoy stable or image transmission. It does look nice, guys. It's got the little extra handles on it. And it slides open like the original Femi X8. Um, controller. So I like it because it extends. It can actually take a small tablet. Okay, so now we get into the artificial intelligence, the IO, AI modes, uh, smart tracking, one tap shots, 
waypoints, what they call flight plan shooting, time lapse, live stream. The time lapse, hope it's, I hope it does better. You can do live stream to different social platforms. It can shoot panorama pictures now. Wow. Hopefully they can rival DJI on the panorama stuff. That's hard to do, guys. This SAR stuff is nothing new. We have it in X8. We have night shooting powered by high silicon professional AI algorithm for noise reduction. The X8 Mini preserve vivid details beyond what can be detected by the eye. Just imagine taking your drone to explore colorful nighttime scene. Wow, good marketing. They're getting really big. They got some good translator. Ooh, the app is different. Oh, wow. Yeah, totally different. So, this kind of reminds me of the Fly app movement, right? So, the GGI Go app started to go away, and then the Fly app is taking over. The functionality is still there, you just have to dig for it a little bit more. Yeah, much simpler. Okay, let's not dwell on that too much. Precision land, the Alto can flow camera below it. I mean, it's got, probably has the sound system underneath too. It's probably gonna take a picture before, you know, at takeoff. And here, multiple safety functions, so return home, real-time tracking with the app. I'm sure you're going to be able to point it at the right direction, know where it's at. Non-fly zone protection. Ooh! That means no fly zone database. Oh, yes. That makes sense. Preparing itself for the federal government regulations across the world. So... It will have no fly zone database. Some of you are not going to like that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have a wind warning, excessive power warning, and low battery alarm return warning. Nothing do there. And then to show the picture again of the two different colors. Very nice. I like the shape. I hope it performs as well as it looks. And then these are the specs, the dimension, the weight, the flight time. Oh, maximum ascending speed is five meters a second, going up. Descending, 3.5 meters a second. Maximum speed, flight speed is 16 meters a second, two meters a second slower than X8 2020. Oh, three different satellite systems, the US GPS, the Russian GLONASS and the BDO from the Chinese. So US, Russian and Chinese satellite system. That's new, that's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, because I've been reading about the Chinese satellite system uh, coming online. Wow, awesome. So you might be able to lock into like 25 satellites. I don't know, <laughs> it would be crazy. And then we talk about operating temperature, 0 to 40 degrees Celsius, suitable altitude, 4,000 meters. So what does that mean? You're going to be able to fly most from the top of most mountains here in North America. And operating frequency, 5.725 to 5.825 gigahertz. So that... It's the end of the information we're seeing on the web, on the internet. Hmm, are you going to buy this drone on April 6th? Sounds pretty promising for that price, right? Hmm, sounds pretty good on, on paper or on the internet. <laughs> well, wow. A lot of stuff to think about, a lot of technology. A lot of new technology and drones today. All right, so let me know in the comments below if you're going to purchase this drone. Also, below, 
in the description you'll find my affiliate links that you know it doesn't add the cost to to the purchases you guys make it just gives us credit once you click on the video on the on the affiliate links it gives us credit for referring you guys to that sale and that's how we are able to bring you content because you guys are using the affiliate link so that leads me to the next point is I want to thank you guys for supporting the channel especially you guys that are subscribed thank you so much and if you haven't subscribed please consider hitting that subscribe button as I like to say smash that subscribe button guys thank you again and don't forget to hit that thumbs up YouTube really likes thumbs up it's part of their algorithms all right, I will see you guys around. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.